almost 40 years, the Texas Jazz Festival has brought jazz to the Corpus Christi area. Once a year from Friday morning until Sunday night, over a hundred jazz groups play for as many as a hundred thousand people. Special features like a jazz mass and a jazz cruise are part of the festival. All of this is available free. The Texas Jazz Festival is the longest running major jazz festival that is still free. The festival began at Del Mar College in 1959. It was a very cold night uh, in November of, of 1959. And, and uh, what happened was that um, one of the founders, Joey Ardo, was a student here. And uh, they had a jazz club. Uh, Skip Vetters was the president. And together, they invited Beto and his band to come and play a jazz concert. And I was part of that band. Uh, when Joe Gallardo, my nephew, was going to school here, he called me in 1959. They wanted to start a, a jazz club here in college, Del Mar. So he says, uh, he says, Beto, do you think we can get our group together? He, see, he was playing with me already. Uh, I had my jazz group. He says, do you think we can get the group together so we can go to Del Mar and show them what jazz is about because they want to know what jazz is about. He says, yeah, sure. But Del Mar at the time was a very classical oriented school. We, we had, it was like a little, little conservatory, classical, classical music, and we dealt with mostly Baroque music. So uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was rather difficult to, to get any cooperation not, not that they did not give it, but it was, it, was, it, it, it was very difficult to try to get something going in the, in the direction of jazz music, which was, for some people was never considered to be a serious form of music. That first concert drew 150 enthusiastic jazz fans. The festival has grown much larger, but it remains true to the original vision of the founders. The goal is to bring the best in jazz to Corpus Christi. Because the first concerts were so successful, the founders wanted a larger space than Del Mar's Harvin Center. They had their eye on Del Mar College's Richardson Auditorium. We, sh we, we gave it a shot to get the uh, auditorium, and they gave us the auditorium. 
And, and like I said, I was telling Beto earlier today, Beto Garcia, I said, and, and, and Skipper had all these buddies of him that were working as, as stagehands and they were handling all the props in the back. And so they gave us a real contemporary uh, backdrop for the festival and we had a beautiful grand piano. So the whole thing, we played at the auditorium and, and it was full. And, and uh, the whole thing was a real success. Unfortunately, we could not get the auditorium anymore because uh, the, the, the people that were coming in, they, they kind of messed it up. They had popcorn and, and, and Coke bottles all over the place. So they, they, I think the people from Del Mar, they frowned upon that. They were not too happy. Founders moved the concert from Del Mar College to the Corpus Christi Tea Heads. The year was 1961. And that concert was the first official jazz festival. Our first Tea Head uh, concert was wonderful. We had no idea that we were going to stop traffic. It was gorgeous. The people just, just swarmed. The traffic was stopped all the way from the Tea Head all the way to Cole Park. The traffic was stopped. So then the police had to come, motorcycles, and move the, the traffic along. So then, after that thing was over that, that year, in July of, of 1962, John Nugent called me and told me, Betty he says, we had some complaints from the boat owners. No, they, says, they, they said that on weekends, that's the only time they can make money on tourists. He said, but, but they said they're like, what you guys are doing? So, okay. So then, so that was the end of the tea head. We were there 61, 62. While the jazz festival never returned to the tea heads, it did remain on the Corpus Christi Bayfront.
one of the first musicians from outside Corpus Christi to come to the festival was Rene Sandoval, who lived in Houston at the time. Uh, I already had the group lined up. Then uh, uh, Rene Sandoval brought that group from Houston. He wanted to play, and I told him, I'm sorry, but you know, I didn't know you guys wanted to play, and I already had the schedule. So Bobby Galvan was nice about it. He says, he says, better if you don't mind, he says, he says, I'm going to get an hour. I says, yes. He says, if you don't mind, he says, I'd like to give him half of my time. He says, it's up to you, Bobby. He says, yeah. So he gave him 30 minutes. And like Eddie said earlier, when they started blowing, that was it. I mean, those guys were way, way ahead. And we drove down here uh, and came in and talked to Beto and uh, Bobby Galvan was gracious enough to lend us a little bit of his time on the schedule and we got up and we played. We had some guys from Houston and, and everything just got really excited. And then after that, I've been here every year. Uh, I've been here for 32 years. Uh, I've been doing it every year. And when we first started, I got to give credit to Mr. Beto Garcia and Wanda and uh, Eddie Olivares and all the founders because we started on a shoestring, no money. It was just an idea from the heart. And uh, we wanted to promote jazz in South Texas. Nobody was doing anything. And Beto and Julie and all these wonderful people here in Corpus just of their own time. And we used to come in from Houston on our own time and with our, on our own gas and for free. Nobody got paid. We did this for about 10 or 12 years. We had groups from San Antonio, groups from Dallas, groups from Houston, groups from the Valley. We would come in and at our own expense. And uh, I tell a funny story about we all, after the festival Sunday, we always used to go over to Beto's house. And all of us, you know, 100, 150, 200 musicians, we'd all gather at Beto's house, and there'd always be the big, uh, the big uh, tubs of beer, you know, full of ice, and we'd sit out there in the yard and shoot the bull and drink beer, and, and then uh, we'd all sleep there in the yard. And then in the morning, we'd all wake up there, and, and Julie, God bless her soul, would cook breakfast for all of us, you know, and then we'd all go back home, you know, Monday at noon, and, uh, and that's how we got started.
Like Rene Sandoval, jazz musicians from around the state quickly heard about the festival, and many returned year after year. I was first invited to do uh, the festival here uh, in 1979. Uh, I got a phone call from uh, Eddie Oliveras, and like uh, we've kind of like become family ever since then. Uh, I've been here every year since '79. Um, and Where are you I love originally it. from? I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank God I get to travel a lot. Uh, I work a lot in Europe. Uh, I work in, in, in you know around the states. I've been a part of it for, oh, let's not say how many years, okay. But I've been a part of it for a long time. And now uh, it's a part of me where I look forward to this. During the time that I was on the road and traveling, I would always work my calendar around the time the jazz festival would be held. I don't travel as much as I used to. I don't do clubs. I'll do concerts and things like that. But the festival is always there. And as long as it's here, I'll be here. Maybe we've got to have another talk. Out of back of all of my clothes and walk. I know a dollar goes from hand to hand. Maybe as sweet as can be Ain't gonna let you make a fool 
the jazz festival quickly became a mecca for local and area musicians. The festival also sought to bring in acts with a national or international reputation. Stan Kenton came one year. Clark Terry came another year. And Spyro Gyro was also a headliner. All of these groups came for free or for a reduced rate. Bet always believed that to get this big artist, and because our festival is free and we want to keep it free, we don't go through the agent, you know. He, I bet he always believes in going to the person himself so that he can understand our situation, okay? And so uh, Beto went directly to Clark Terry and Clark came for that. But the funny thing, what I'm, what's in my mind in connection with that is that later on through the years, um, we try to get Dizzy Gillespie and Beto talked to Dizzy Gillespie and, uh, and Beto explained to him that the festival and everything, and that uh, Clark came here for 750 bucks, you know, and he said, oh, no, he says, I don't step out the door for less than 5,000. <laughs> so, so, so Beto said, <laughs> Beto said, but Clark did it. He said, well, I guess you'll have to get Clark. <laughs> but, but that was dizzy. By 1968, it became apparent that the Jazz Festival was a lasting thing. The Texas Jazz Festival Society came into being. The goals were to promote the performance of live jazz, to showcase local and area talent, to foster tourism, to help educate young jazz artists, and to present the Jazz Festival free of charge. Although not stated as a goal, one of the major themes at the Jazz Festival has always been Latin influences in jazz. We would wanted to show the the people, the nation, the tech, the uh, that the uh, what we thought was jazz with the Latin influence. Since uh, a lot of the jazz musicians in Corpus Christi were uh, Hispanics, you know, um, Beto thought we could go and show the nation and the, and the, uh, the influence of, of Latin music through jazz or the vice versa. Uh, most of the festivals that I've been to are big festivals that are here to make a lot of money and they bring people from all over the world and it's a big ticket selling thing. It becomes, it's a money making event. This, this event is not necessarily to try to compete with uh, the, the Newport Festival or the JVC Festival in New York or the Pori Festival or North Sea Festival in Europe. 
this is the community. It was started by people in the community, mostly, I think, pretty much completely by the Mexican-American community here, guys like Joe Gallardo and Raul Arnelas and, and uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie Oliveras and Beto. Yeah, Beto Garcia and so on. And, and they keep, the, the feelings here are if anybody from around the world wants to come, you're welcome. But they still feel that the important thing is here in Corpus Christi. And, and the, when I've seen people come out here and watch them standing backstage, and everybody knows everybody. I mean, it's fantastic. It's, they are a community, and that's what this is. It's a community event that should be attended by people from all over the world to, to be able to see not only the great musicians, also, they don't just try and base it on the most famous people. They have groups from all over Texas, and being, uh, being uh, part uh, Texican person, I've known a lot of these people and seen a lot of these people. There's great music all over this state. Thank you. 
The interest in Latin influence led to bands from Mexico being featured. This led to a problem on one occasion. Some really great stories <laughs> trying to get those people across the border, believe me. <laughs> At one time, that we were having a dance, we were having a dance, because one of my fundraisers was a dance, and, and we had this band from uh, Tampico, Claudio Rosas, uh, was playing for the dance. And uh, well, before the dance started, you know, the, um, the sheriff shows up, sheriff or somebody, the constable, and he says, there'll be no dance tonight. We're going to confiscate all the instruments because these guys from Mexico, when they bought, came about the instruments in McAllen, and they haven't made payment on them, you know. So we're here to confiscate them. No dance. <laughs> so you can imagine, here's all the people waiting, waiting for the, for the band to start. Close the curtain and not, nothing's going on and people start clapping, you know how they do, you know, jumping and, and nothing's happening. So I, I ran out in the audience and got our lawyer, Virgil Howard, and uh, he came and talked to him and uh, we made a deal that, you know, people here ready to dance, we can't, we can't do, we can't do that right now. But they were ready to do it and uh, Virgil said, how about if we post a bond for the for the amount of the debt until this dance is over. And that was acceptable to them. So we went in the office behind the Coliseum, little dinky portable typewriter that just was absolutely terrible. And he dictated a, a bond, a very good bond to secure their debt. And uh, he signed it and I believe he got Tony Bonilla to, to co-sign with him. So what was happening was this, see, Claudio Rosa was taking the money out of the guys every time they would play, but he wasn't making the payments at the music store, so which all of us, we didn't know, you know, we didn't know these things, you know. So that's why they wanted to take the instruments, and the guys, you know, they were right, you know, they wanted their money, you know. So then we, through virtual, the late Virtual Howard, they got us uh, as a nonprofit organization registered in Austin, and through Wanda and Tony Bonilla, uh, we talked to these people and said, look, look, we've got to have this dance because you can see we, we had a pack house, you know. We, oh, we had about, uh, oh, about 1,500 people at the dance, you know. So then they, that's when the guy says, well, okay, you know. So then, uh, thank God the dance was a success. So then after the dance, you know, they, they took the instruments with them to the, to the courthouse.
Probably the key feature of the festival is that it's free. Miller Beer, American Airlines, the City of Corpus Christi, and others provide some financial support, but each festival is a struggle. Yes, it is a free festival, and it's uh, one of the very few, I think, remaining. It is difficult to, uh, to, to pull together the resources that, that, that you need to put on a festival. We're we talking about a $100,000 budget for the whole issue by the time you've, you've uh, from one year to the, the next. All, all the expenses of the auxiliary equipment and the, the, uh, uh, the, the things that the mechanics of, of putting on a festival are not, not cheap and we, have to, we pay the musicians of course. This uh, enables a lot of people to enjoy the music probably for the first time, maybe the young people particularly uh, I'll probably hear their first jazz music here at, at Corpus Christi uh, on, on the Bayfront because it, it, it's free. It's one thing to, to charge a little fee, uh, but jazz is a, is a thing like I'm saying, we're trying to keep it going on. And we wanted, and still do, everyone in this area, the South Texas area, to be able to come and bring their children and sit down and listen to this wonderful jazz that won't cost them a penny. the organizers and participants, the festival is a labor of love. Often it's a love passed on from father to son or daughter. We uh, could give you the secret now for other youngsters or other parents. After dinner, I would say you can practice or wash the dishes. 
<laughs> As you see, he plays quite well. I decided to practice. Because <laughs> there's so many good musicians in Texas, I appreciate the opportunity to come and be a part of it. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be asked to be, to be on it, because there's so many good musicians, uh, old, young, and in between. So um, I, I appreciate what they're doing. I, I'm glad for what they're doing. And, um, you know, there's, there's festivals all nation, uh, nationwide, and this is one that's representing the talent that's come out of Texas, and there's been a lot of it. Uh, Kirk Whalum, the Ronnie Laws, and the, the Crusaders, Joe Sample, uh, and from the old school, uh, Illinois Jacket mm -hmm. and uh, what's the Arnett Cobb, Arnett Cobb, all that. I mean, the list is long of musicians that have come out of Texas. Actually, though, uh, speaking of jazz festivals, Dallas could learn a lot from Corpus Christi. <laughs> That's true. There's nothing in Dallas like this. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
In honor of the festival, the state of Texas designated it as the official jazz festival of Texas in 1989. That's what we're about, but all three of us are trying to do, is save jazz as an American art form. And that's what it is. It's America's indigenous music. So that's been our interest the whole time. And um, we've had grand time doing it, and I expect we'll continue for some time.